Hey everyone, welcome to the first FTC Java short. My name is Hunter Cooperman, and I'm one of the programmers on the Penguineers. So today we're going to be covering something super duper simple, just adding basic speed controls to Teleop. So the basic idea is that we're going to be taking whatever combination of joystick values that you might normally be using to power your motors, and then we're going to be using the buttons on the gamepad to scale those speeds down to 50% or 25%, depending on which button you're pressing. And what this will do is it'll allow you to have it hard coded in so that you can toggle between modes when you need to quickly switch between recklessly flying down the field at full speed to save time to precisely making movements so that you need to score a particular game element in a scoring area. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So like I said earlier, what we're going to be doing is using um, these buttons right here to scale down the joystick values. And in your first teleop program, you might just kind of plop the joystick values directly into the motor. And that's because these values are really convenient because each axis outputs a value from negative one to one. And the motors also intake a value from negative one to one. So they're directly compatible. And so what we're going to be doing is scaling this negative one to one value that we have right here from the joysticks down by a certain percentage, depending on what button you hit. And so to do this, well, let's say we have this joystick value J, we're just going to be multiplying it by some speed value. And that's kind of speed multiplier will be some decimal between zero and one. So like for 50%, it would be 0.5. And that's going to allow us to scale down the speed that we would normally get from the joysticks. And this has two advantages. The first is that it lets you toggle between different speeds. And so you can go a lot faster or a lot slower if you need to. And second of all, it allows you to be more precise because the same change in the joystick is now going to be resulting in only half of the change of the motors. You know, For example, if you were scaling down to 50% speed. So now that we've kind of drawn it out, let's get right into coding. So right here I have a pretty basic teleop, and I actually adapted the majority of it from the POV pushbot sample teleop program that's available from first. But basically the way that it works is that you have one joystick to control driving straight and one to control turning. And then basically you're going to combine those two into values for the left and the right motors, um, which are going to serve as our kind of joystick values that I talked about earlier that we're going to scale up and down. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a value for our speed multiplier. So we're going to need to initialize a new variable. And like I said earlier, this variable is going to need to be a decimal between 0 and 1. So we're going to need to initialize it as a double because that can hold the variable value, as opposed to an integer, which can only hold you know, an integer or a whole number. So I'm going to go create a new double, and I'll call it speed. It doesn't really matter if you want to initialize it to something you can. I'll just initialize it to 1 so the robot will be traveling at 100% speed um, you know, if it just skips over the if statement or something like that. And so now we need to actually create the logic to make this code work. So all we need to do is put if statements right here to control whether or not we are setting the speed value to something different. And that's because teleop is actually just a big loop. You can see it right here. We've got this while loop, and then this op mode is active is just going to be a conditional. So the entirety of teleop, everything in this loop repeats once every, I believe, 40 milliseconds. And so when we're deciding where we want to place this code, we probably want to place it up here at the top of the loop. And that's because we want to check the speed values before we actually apply them to the left and right uh, variables that we have down here. Because if we put it you know, somewhere at the bottom, below where we apply the speed values, then we would be waiting an additional 40 milliseconds before those values got applied, which doesn't really make a lot of sense because programs run from top to bottom. So let's go right here and let's just really quickly create a, our first if statement. Let's just make a kind of skeleton. And we can kind of arbitrarily pick buttons. So let's say that the Y button makes the robot travel at 50% speed. So to get the Y button, all we're going to have to do is do gamepad one, or you could do gamepad two, depending on which button you want or which gamepad you want to choose. And you just do Y. And I actually don't need to say this is equal to anything. I don't need to say it's equal to, you know, like true or false or et cetera, because this statement right here will actually return true or false because it itself is a Boolean. And so basically what this is going to say is if the Y button is actively being pressed down, then we're going to do what's in the if statement. So let's just say speed is equal to 50%. And then we're just going to repeat the same process for the other one. So let's say the B button is going to make the speed set equal to, I don't know, 75%. Don't forget your semicolons. And that's 
let's see. And then we can say, you know, maybe the um, X button is going to set the speed equal to being 25%. And then we'll just add an else statement right here so that by default, the speed will be 100%. And so basically what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to um, have by default the robot will travel at its maximum speed and then holding down the buttons will give you more precise control of the robot. And so let's just add a quick comment, you know, get speed values. All right, so now we need to actually go ahead and apply the speed value that we found up here. And there's a couple of places you could apply it. Um, you could apply it just down here when we are actually inputting the speeds into the motors. But for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna do it above that on its own line. Um, you know, that way I can just see it easier and make it super obvious what I'm doing. So I'm gonna start out and I'm gonna write a new comment, just something like, you know, apply speed multiplier. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the left value that we found up here, and I'm just gonna multiply it by the speed multiplier. And I'll do the same thing for the right. And so times equals is obviously gonna be kind of the shortcut for uh, you know multiplying something. So if I say like left times equals speed, that's the same thing as saying left equals left times speed. Um, just in case you didn't know that because this is kind of the first video. But now we're pretty much good. So all we've done is we've just created this conditional kind of logic up here and then to find the speed values. And then we've kind of just applied them down here. And since we actually changed the left and right variables themselves, that change will take effect um, in time for us to apply them down here when we apply the actual values to the motors. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly build the program. Great, and it works. So let's go ahead and test it out. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and test this program. So right here I have our old robot from last season. Um, we haven't done a lot of work on it, so it's going to make a little bit of clicking noises. But that's all right. And so as you can see by default, when I just push the joysticks, it's going to be moving at 100% speed. And when it's moving at 100% speed, it's actually going fast enough that it's jerking the mats around like forwards and backwards because of Newton's third law. And so basically, now I can go test each of these controls. So if I go down on here and I hold the B button, you can see that it's going to go at 75% speed. Same thing with the Y, it's going to be going at only 50% speed. And this also works for the turning too. It's going to be going much slower when turning. And then if we go to the X button as well, that's going to be kind of the most stark difference with it going at the slowest speed out of all of them. And so then if we go back ahead and compare the original speed, which was 100% with 25% speed, you can see that we're gonna be able to be making much more precise movements with the secondary speed over here. All right, so now you have another tool you can use to improve a basic teleop. Now, there are probably a lot of ways to better execute that idea. You might want to use the bumpers and the triggers instead of the buttons. Or you might think it's better to just press the button once and have it toggle between modes rather than hold it down. This just happened to be what worked the best for our drivers during last season. And you should experiment on your own with this and all the other shorts to figure out what's the best for your drive team, your season, and your robot. Now, a lot of you guys probably already knew how to do that. And it's true, a lot of the skills covered in this video were pretty simple. But we wanted to make a basic video covering a basic skill that way we could learn how to make these tutorials and we can figure out what the format is. In the future, we're probably going to be covering classes and methods next, maybe in two or three separate videos. That way we can cover things that involve methods in the future, like encoders or mechanism wheels. But we don't really have a lot lined up in the future and we're planning on just making videos for the entire summer. So if you have any ideas or just any suggestions in general on how we can improve the format, totally leave them down in the comments because this is kind of a new thing that we're doing. We've never done this before. And you know, any suggestions to change the format to make it more informative or more entertaining would be super helpful. And don't forget to subscribe. Tune in probably in the next couple of days to see the next tutorial on using methods. Thank you.